useful life of these vehicles is over. This is the end of their road, the salvage depot. Some of these vehicles were wrecked in accidents. Some ended up here because of mechanical failures. Some are worn out. And in a great number of cases, their service life was cut short by faulty lubrication. For example, this vehicle stalled in action because it was not lubricated correctly, giving the enemy a perfect target. The result? A wrecked vehicle, a crew killed, perhaps a battle lost. All because a fighting film of oil was not present when and where it should have been. Poor lubrication causes excessive friction, the most destructive enemy of any motor vehicle, quickly ruining good parts, reducing them to nothing more than junk metal. Now just what is friction? No one knows what it is, but we all know what it does. For instance, if we take a piece of smooth dry metal and push another piece of metal along it, it doesn't slide easily because of friction. By highly magnifying these surfaces, we see them to be quite rough and covered with minute hills and valleys, which interlock, resist movement, generate heat, destroy the surface. Naturally, with this resistance, it takes considerable power to move the block. We call that resistance friction. Now let's put oil between the blocks. One block slides on the other with very little resistance and with far less power required to push it. The microscope reveals that the oil film has separated the two surfaces so that wear and tear have been reduced to a minimum. There are hundreds of places in a vehicle where friction occurs, such as a piston and the cylinder in which it moves. The teeth of all meshing gears all bearings and the shafts they support. This friction is always present between the two moving parts, at low speeds as well as high speeds and at varying degrees of pressure. In general, friction increases when the pressure at which the two surfaces move against each other is increased. The effect of a lubricant between two surfaces can be shown clearly by means of this animated diagram. The lubricant forms a film between the two surfaces and keeps them separated. Under very high magnification, it is seen that this film of lubricant is made up of layers of tiny oil globules. The layer of globules next to the metal surface sticks to the surface so strongly that the globules may be considered as solids and part of the metal. When the metal surfaces move with relation to each other, the outside layer of globules is carried with the metal and acts very much like the metal itself. As one surface is moved across the other, the in-between layers of oil globules act much as tiny ball bearings. If there are at least five layers of oil globules to hold the surfaces apart, the lubrication is considered sufficient and there will be a minimum amount of friction between the bearing surfaces. If there are less than five layers between the metal surfaces, the lubrication is called partial or boundary lubrication. Friction will not have been reduced to a minimum or safe point. If there are less than three layers, there is insufficient lubrication between the bearing parts. Metal-to-metal -metal contact may result, and the remaining two layers, which stick to the metal so that they also act as solids, tend to score the moving surfaces, causing excessive friction. Bearing surfaces are rapidly destroyed by metal-to-metal -metal contact of moving parts. In internal combustion engines, the pistons slide up and down inside the cylinder walls at great speed. Rubbing against each other, they would soon be pitted and scored or frozen together unless a proper film of oil kept their surfaces apart 
and prevented metal-to-metal -metal contact. This is what happens when insufficient lubrication causes a piston assembly to freeze in the cylinder. Something has got to go. In this case, the connecting rod. These are some examples of bearing surfaces worn, scored, ruined by faulty lubrication. Damaged parts due to insufficient lubrication cost thousands of hours of labor, cause badly needed vehicles to be taken out of service for repair and replacement, and may destroy a bearing or engine completely. Thus, the first and primary function of lubrication is to keep moving surfaces apart, prevent metal-to-metal -metal contact. In other words, to lessen or reduce friction. This makes for more efficient operation and reduces wear. In internal combustion engines, the speed of movement of engine parts and the rapid succession of explosions at high temperatures generate heat so that the moving engine parts become hot. And an overheated engine is an inefficient engine. The oil which is used as a lubricant helps carry some of the heat away from the hot surfaces. In gasoline and diesel engines, the splash or pressure method distributes the oil to the moving parts. In some diesel engines, oil is squirted directly on the underside of the piston in order to help cool the moving parts. Thus, the second function of lubrication is to help cool the engine parts, gears and bearing surfaces. As the name implies, internal combustion engines burn fuel inside closed chambers, the cylinders. The resulting explosion forces the piston down and via the connecting rod and crankshaft transmits torque to the transmission, differential and transfer unit to move the vehicle. Though piston and cylinder are made to fit quite closely within tolerances of several thousandths of an inch, there must be some space between the wall and the piston to allow the piston to move. But for the most efficient operation, this space must be sealed so that the full force of the explosion in the combustion chamber is directed at the piston. The piston rings alone cannot do this complete sealing job. It is the lubricating oil which seals the space between the piston rings and the cylinder walls. The lack of a proper oil film means the gases are not completely sealed in the combustion chamber. We can illustrate clearly the gases escaping between the piston and cylinder walls by momentarily stopping the piston on the power stroke. This blow-by means that power is lost. While serious enough because of the power loss, blow-by is also a contributing cause of friction and wear. As the unburned fuel and exhaust gases blow past the piston, they wash the oil film from the piston and cylinder wall. When the unburned fuel and exhaust gases reach the crankcase, they contaminate and dilute the oil. Diluted oil can become so thin that the oil pump cannot maintain the proper pressure in the oil line. The thin oil is squeezed from between bearing surfaces and metal-to-metal -metal contacts result. The consequences can be disastrous. Thus, the third function of lubrication in motor vehicles is to keep power in the cylinder, that is, prevent blow-by. Foreign matter, such as dirt or mud particles, as well as bits of metal, which wear off the engine parts, reduce the useful life of the engine. They may also clog oil lines and lessen engine efficiency. Lubricating oil acts as a cleaning agent, carrying these particles away from the engine. The air cleaner helps reduce the amount of contamination entering the engine by filtering the air as it enters. Make certain that it is serviced at proper intervals depending on operating conditions. Condensation of moisture in the crankcase, especially during cold or wet weather, is another factor which will destroy the lubricating properties of an engine oil. 
This contamination results under certain conditions in a chemical action with elements in the oil which forms an acid. This acid will damage engine parts. The oil passes through an oil filter. Here some of the contamination is separated from it so that clean oil returns to the engine. This is a constant cycle. In time, depending on operating conditions, these filters would become clogged if not changed regularly. But if they are changed at specified intervals, the oil will be kept clean and maintain its effectiveness. Old type oils, after a certain period, become contaminated with abrasives and collected sludge, causing excessive friction and wear, heat and power loss, clogging of oil lines, and eventually, engine failure. But now, all army oils contain a cleaning agent which supplements the cleaning action of the oil filter. As seen in this transparent crankcase, impurities small enough to pass through the filter are kept in suspension in the oil and not allowed to settle on engine parts. These small impurities are removed with the oil when it is drained. In draining, be sure to let all the oil possible run out before replacing the plug. And so the fourth function of lubrication is to serve as a cleaning agent to remove contamination and thus prevent deterioration of the engine parts. When taking medicine, it is extremely unwise just to gulp the stuff down without following the doctor's directions written on the bottle. Taking too little or too much and then looking at the directions like this poor fellow won't do and may have disastrous consequences. The same is true of engine oil. Too much oil can cause excessive heat, drag, foaming, oil waste, and will reduce power and performance. Too little oil means insufficient and improper lubrication, resulting in excessive friction and wear. The troughs do not become properly filled, and the connecting rods do not reach the lubricant. Therefore, for smooth and efficient engine operation, always keep the oil in the crankcase at the correct specified level so that all engine parts will be properly lubricated. The troughs will then be properly filled so that the connecting rods will dip into the oil and aid in the lubrication process. Check with the lubrication guide for the proper level to be maintained in each vehicle. No man who wanted to keep his watch running would pull a boner like this. And to keep an engine running smoothly, it must be operated with the lubricant for which it was designed to operate. Just any old oil will not do. It must be the right oil for the specific operating condition. The use of any oil, except the grade of engine oil specified in each case, simply invites breakdowns and serious engine failure. To make sure that the correct lubricants are used at all times, grades suitable for each operating and temperature condition are supplied for all Army vehicles and equipment. These lubricants differ in viscosity. By the term viscosity, we mean the body, that is, the thickness or thinness of the lubricant. This can be demonstrated by dropping two balls of equal weight into test tubes filled with oils of different viscosities. The ball falls more quickly in the tube on the left because that tube is filled with an oil of lower viscosity, a lighter bodied oil. In the tube on the right, the ball falls through the oil at a slower rate because that oil has a higher viscosity. It is thicker. The choice of an oil with the correct viscosity is very important. Changes in temperature also affect the viscosity of oil. Remember the old saying, as slow as cold molasses? Watch how slowly this cold oil pours. It would not circulate fast enough to provide safe lubrication in an engine. Now let's heat some of this cold oil. See how the heated oil on the right has become much thinner so that it flows faster and spreads more. So naturally in cold weather, 
a light lubricant with low viscosity must be used to obtain fast circulation to all parts, especially when starting. In hot weather, a lubricant of higher viscosity is needed to maintain a safe lubricating film between the moving parts. No one in his right senses would celebrate Christmas in the tropics wearing his winter clothes just because he happened to be brought up where Christmas came in cold weather and the calendar read December 25th. It would be just as ridiculous and much more disastrous to make oil changes seasonally from the calendar instead of from actual temperature conditions. The weather and temperature would determine a man's choice of clothing unless he were crazy. Change oil according to temperature and refer to the lubrication guide for the correct grade to use for each temperature range. In the past, the color of the oil was often used wrongly as a basis for determining whether the oil should be changed. That was because the sludge would settle out of the oil and form deposits in the bottom of the crankcase, leaving the oil relatively clear, even though it might need to be changed. When the engine was in operation, the contamination would be diffused in much the same way as with this egg beater, adhering to and harming the engine parts. When all the oil was black, however, it certainly needed to be changed. But now the cleaning agent added to all army engine oils keep impurities in suspension in the oil, so that in a relatively short time, the oil may look black, although it still functions efficiently as a lubricant and does not allow particles to settle on engine parts. Therefore, as long as the filter cartridge is changed regularly as specified, the oil should not be changed because it looks dirty. Change oil according to mileage, hours, or operating conditions as indicated on the lubrication guide. In spite of all their fine equipment and all the water around them, the fire department could never have put this fire out if their water pressure system had failed. And if the pressure lubrication system of an engine fails, even though there's enough oil in the crankcase, the engine will be quickly destroyed if allowed to keep on running. The trouble must be found and remedied immediately. Lubricating the engine so that it develops full power is of no value unless this power can be efficiently converted to move the vehicle. This is the job of the differentials, transmission, and transfer unit. Transmission parts take great punishment, and in spite of the fact that they are built to withstand heavy service, they will wear rapidly unless they are fully protected by proper lubrication. The gear lubricant must cushion shock loads and protect the gears as well as lubricate all bearing surfaces. If the lubricant cannot withstand these shock loads, the teeth come in contact with each other and cause friction, resulting in damage to the gears. Worn gear teeth prevent proper gear meshing, causing not only power loss, but rapid wear and eventual failure of the transmission. Therefore, the oil used must have the correct body or viscosity to protect all the gears and bearings, but must not be too heavy or it will cause drag and power loss. Keeping the gear lubricant in the transmission at the proper level is important too, just as important as keeping the engine oil at the specified level. To reduce the hazards of contamination and abrasives by water, the gear lubricant in the transmission should be changed regularly according to the lubrication guide for the vehicle. The gear case should be flushed out with SAE 10 engine oil to remove all the old lubricant, grit and metal particles and then refilled with the correct grade of oil in accordance with temperature and operating conditions. The differential gears also require servicing at correct intervals with a specified grade of lubricant. Here, too, meshing gears contact each other at a number of different points. Faulty lubrication here means power loss, rapid wear of gears and bearings, and ultimate breakdown. The area of contact is always small in proportion to the load, 
which makes the pressure extremely high. For all these reasons, the regular proper lubrication of front and rear differentials, transmissions, and transfer gears on all vehicles is extremely important. Neglect may mean breakdown and temporary or permanent loss of a badly needed vehicle. From the different types of lubricating jobs to be done on various parts of the vehicle, it is easy to see why different types of correct lubricants must be used. And there are many other lubrication points which must not be forgotten. The army moves on wheels, and the wheel bearings must support the whole vehicle. They are finely made precision bearings in constant motion when the vehicle is traveling. Oil would quickly run out of the bearing. So greases are the lubricants used for wheel bearings and chassis lubrication. Of all the greases now available to army maintenance, only the water pump grease is not soluble in water. Because of this fact, chassis parts and wheel bearings must be serviced after operations in mud and water, or they will corrode and pit quickly if not protected with adequate lubrication. As we have seen, Lubrication has four important functions. One, it lessens friction, which makes for more efficient operation and reduces wear and tear on moving parts. Two, lubrication helps cool the moving parts. Three, the lubricant prevents blow-by by sealing the space between piston and cylinder walls. And four, the lubricant acts as a cleaning agent carrying away dirt and other abrasive particles from the engine. Fighting men are mighty careful to keep their guns clean, well-oiled and in the best possible condition. They know their line, and those of their comrades in arms may depend on the condition of their guns. It is equally important to keep the trucks, the jeeps, the tanks, and the other motorized vehicles which carry our fighting men and equipment into battle in the same clean, well-lubricated condition. Because in modern mechanized warfare, material, lives, and battles depend on motorized transport. A vehicle stalled because of faulty or insufficient lubrication may mean the end of the road for both vehicle and crew and may lose the battle for the units advancing to engage the enemy because one vehicle, one gun, one crew can mean the difference between victory and defeat. So keep every part of the vehicle properly lubricated at all times. Put that fighting film where it is needed, when it is needed, to help keep vehicles rolling steadily, dependably, efficiently, carrying the fight to the enemy at all times and under every condition. What is friction? No one knows what it is, but we all know what it does. For instance, if we take a piece of smooth dry metal and push another piece of metal along it, it doesn't slide easily because of friction. By highly magnifying these surfaces, we see them to be quite rough and covered with minute hills and valleys, which interlock, resist movement, generate heat, destroy the surface. Naturally, with this resistance, it takes considerable power to move the block. We call that resistance friction. Now let's put oil between the blocks. One block slides on the other with very little resistance and with far less power required to push it. The microscope reveals that the oil film has separated the two surfaces so that wear and tear have been reduced to a minimum. There are hundreds of places in a vehicle where friction occurs. 
such as a piston and the cylinder in which it moves. The teeth of all meshing gears. All bearings and the shafts they support. This friction is always present between the two moving parts, at low speeds as well as high speeds, and at varying degrees of pressure. In general, friction increases when the pressure at which the two surfaces move against each other is increased. The effect of a lubricant between two surfaces can be shown clearly by means of this animated diagram. The lubricant forms life of these vehicles is over. This is the end of their road, the salvage depot. Some of these vehicles were wrecked in accidents. Some ended up here because of mechanical failures. Some are worn out. And in a great number of cases, their service life was cut short by faulty lubrication. For example, this vehicle stalled in action because it was not lubricated correctly giving the enemy a perfect target. The result? A wrecked vehicle, a crew killed, perhaps a battle lost. All because a fighting film of oil was not present when and where it should have been. Poor lubrication causes excessive friction, the most destructive enemy of any motor vehicle, quickly ruining good parts, reducing them to nothing more than junk metal. Now just the film between the two surfaces and keeps them separated. Under very high magnification, it is seen that this film of lubricant is made up of layers of tiny oil globules. The layer of globules next to the metal surface sticks to the surface so strongly that the globules may be considered as solids and part of the metal. When the metal surfaces move with relation to each other, the outside layer of globules is carried with the metal and acts very much like the metal itself. As one surface is moved across the other, the in-between layers of oil globules act much as tiny ball bearings. If there are at least five layers of oil globules to hold the surfaces apart, 